Hello, guys. My name is Guan Xin, and I come from China. I am a Chinese student who come to Malaysia for my university life. And in this video, I'd like to share you guys about Chinese culture. Actually, this is my intercultural communication assignment, but I'm very happy to share that because uh, I'm. But to be honest, I'm very interested on this kind of knowledge. So then I will share you guys a video. I will talking about Chinese culture and then you will learn a lot of things from that. I come from mainland China and my ethnic group is called the Huaxia people. There are 56 ethnic groups in total, including the most prominent Han Chinese and the 55 other groups. The Han is the most common Chinese ethnic group. Each group has specific customs and language, but with the passage and the development of the times, most Chinese people speak the standard official language, with only the local residents using the dialects. Chinese is the official language of our country. In schools, students learn Chinese and English, and more and more young people are eager to go to out into the world, I mean the international world, you know, and learn about um, international situation. So as the mentioned above, China has a long history of 5,000 years and uh, is one of the four oldest Asian countries in the world. This is why many elements of our culture, such as our dress culture and food culture has been influenced by history and uh, have continued to advance, uh, evolving into a colorful and special Chinese culture. So another thing that I want to talk about is Chinese mythology. The ancient Chinese created many roles, myths and stories, and it would take years to finish them all. In Chinese mythology, one of the most common stories is that a man was made out of clay by a god called Nuwa, and the holes in the sky were once filled by the god Nuwa with seven colored stones. Uh, there were once 10 suns in the sky and because it was too hot and nine were shot down by a god called Hou Yi and the wife of Hou Yi was called Chang'e, I think everybody know that maybe and who took an uh, ele elixir like drugs and uh, become a soul light that she flew to the moon and uh, lived there for a long time with the judge here which is a rabbit you know and there are many many messes like this one like ancient greek messes this chinese mythological stories bring a belief to the chinese people and the ancient chinese also had a lot of ideas for example the human body and here are born by the parents so you can't you shouldn't hurt yourself or cut your hair and the smaller a woman's feet are the more noble they are so girls grow up with thick strips of clothes wrapped, uh, wrapped around their toes to deform them as they grew uh, to just making them smaller this custom is similar to the um, how to say similar to the European tradition of uh, growing the waste, which is a harmful practice. And this kind of uh, feudal ideas and traditional messes have their advantages and disadvantages. But in any case, they add an interesting and enriching. A dimension to the development of Chinese history and culture and uh, deserve to be studied and learned from. So because it is a communication class, so I would like to talk something about uh, high context and low context communication in China. So in China, most people prefer high context communication. People experience 
uh, I mean, people explain their feelings in a very subtle, a uh, subtle way. For example, people in other country prefer to say "I love you, mom" in the morning to the mothers who are cooking breakfast. But Chinese children, on the other hand, often choose to express their love by handing their mother a glass of milk or asking her if her work is going well, or、uh, something like that. So for us. It is often difficult to say "I love you," and often Chinese people speak、uh, in a way that is strange to their international friends because they always say the、um, upside, something like、uh, "I will do this next time to show." It just means that we don't want to do that. So,、um, in fact, for me. Personally, I prefer to express emotions in a direct manner. In China, people who use low context are often considered to be a low in emotional intel intelligence. As you can see, this video is created by many cameramen from different places in China, and it it is talking about different cultures in China. So it's a it will be a very long video, but I just show a part, a small part of it for you guys. So actually, the culture in the history of China is. Very very difficult to explain all the things for you guys in one video. I'm very glad to talking and share more things about that to you. If you would like to know about the knowledge and stories in Chinese culture, so that's all about this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time, next assignment. Bye.